Sorry to interrupt your lunch, but uh, I did want to make a few remarks. Um, a few remarks of welcome and appreciation for your coming and, and visiting with us again. Um, I know that some of you are Baskin Engineering alums. Some of you are engineering alums before there was a Baskin Engineering. And maybe some of you are uh, alums of completely different programs that had nothing to do with engineering. But in any case, you are all welcome. Um, and uh, I want to thank, thank the faculty and the staff and the students who've, who've made this possible today. Um, you know, I think people are really enjoy having visitors, enjoy having uh, people come and, and show their interest in what we're doing here. And what we're doing here is really, really spectacular. Um, and I want to share some of that, some of that with you. So first, um, I'm going to share a few words about the school itself. Uh, some of you are quite familiar with it. Some of you aren't as familiar with how it's evolved. Uh, school of Engineering was formed in 1997, so it's uh, not quite 22 years old. And it was formed from two departments, <coughs> computer science, computer engineering. Uh, there were 26 faculty members at the time. And uh, it came out of the former natural sciences division uh, to become the School of Engineering. And it's evolved in, in a somewhat organic way since then. And today, there are over 100 faculty uh, in six departments and over 5,000 students in engineering. And that's both undergraduates and graduate students. So it's become you know, from basically nothing <laughs> to being something which is probably, probably represents the most fundamental change in the academic mission of the University of California at Santa Cruz. And it did so in just over 20 years. So right now, the undergraduates in engineering represent about a quarter, a quarter of the, quarter of the engineering quarter of the undergraduates at UC Santa Cruz are in engineering, and more than a third of the graduate students are in engineering. And uh, that's a pretty significant place to be. And we, we understand what that means, and what we understand what UC Santa Cruz is, and what it represents, and the important role that engineering plays, plays in, the ed in not just the education of the students, but in the intellectual vibrancy of the entire university. To give you a little bit more feel, um, in 2014, just over, just a bit over 12% of the students who were entering indicated that they wanted to major in engineering. And in 2018, nearly 32% of the students who were coming into UC Santa Cruz indicated that they want to wanted to major in engineering. So that's a really, really significant change, and obviously it reflects the changes in, in our society and where we see both interest in engineering, we see the impact of engineering, and also, frankly, the route through which people can achieve some social mobility. And you may have heard, or you may be aware or not aware, that 40% of the undergraduates in UC Santa Cruz student body are first-gen students. 40%. And uh, it's, it's no doubt where, where we live and in the time we live that engineering offers a ready route um, to uh, a greater, greater security, food security, home security, and support for um, social mobility. And, and, uh, and I think, you know, we appreciate that role and, and the fact that we are helping people to find careers um, where, where they are ready. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about some initiatives that we've been, we've been engaged in over the, over the uh, past, past year, for those of you who visited last year. So the, the campus in general has started a new initiative and a, actually a renewed an interest and initiative in 
innovation and entrepreneurial and, and entrepreneurship um, that we refer to as I and E. And there's a steering committee now that's been formed, a campus-wide steering committee, to envision what innovation and entrepreneurship can mean for UC Santa Cruz. I happen to chair that committee. Uh, it's a committee, uh, it's a campus leadership committee made up of um, all of the deans on the campus from all of the divisions and uh, several other leaders of the campus, including the uh, vice chancellor for research. Um, and we have a, uh, one of the campus, one of the college provosts is on the committee for Cowell College. Um, and what it's intended to do is try to, in a sense, surface all of the various innovation and entrepreneurship efforts that are ongoing on campus and try to understand how that can be melded into a coherent vision for the university. And as you know, we are the closest university, the closest public university to Silicon Valley. And uh, that gives us both a responsibility and an opportunity uh, to impact what is clearly one of the major, major drivers of the California economy, but also the US economy and the world economy. In fact, as you know, <laughs> California is the fifth largest economy in the world. Um, and uh, if the Bay Area was its own country, it would be something like the 15th largest country in the world. So that's pretty <laughs> significant. Um, so we're doing that at the campus level more locally in Baskin Engineering. Um, we've been partnering with uh, an organization here, ISEE, uh, to try to, to see how we can um, think about evolving our curriculum to give students more of an entrepreneurial, um, entrepreneurial thinking and experiential learning um, education. So driving students towards uh, thinking about how their work, how they can impact society, uh, how they can learn through doing and become engineers that will uh, have, a, have a positive impact on, on our world. And, with that, with that, you know, um, again, being very conscious of what UC Santa Cruz is and what it means, what it stands for, uh, the passion of the students here is really about engineering for good. Engineering that makes a positive impact on society. Um, students who want to innovate solutions that are solving societal problems and also taking up important opportunities that can improve our, um, our world. They want to be ethical, and they want to be empowered agents for good. And uh, that's, those themes are, are very present in our minds as we develop our programs and develop our new programs. And um, you know, you've, you've, some of you have had a chance uh, to, to see some of the work here uh, you've, this morning in the teach-ins, um, they all kind of revolve around that theme of good. And uh, when you go on the lab tours in a moment, um, you'll also see that continuing through some of the, the research that's going on. Um, we recently formed a new council uh, within the engineering school specifically to try to, uh, try to broaden our audience, broaden our student base, broaden uh, our uh, inclusiveness, right? So an issue that all engineering schools face is the fact that we are not as diverse as the population we're serving. And this council is looking to help build a more diverse, more inclusive, and a more equitable environment for our faculty, our staff, and in particular, our students. And part of that effort, of course, is also building a pipeline that is more welcoming. Um, and we have a number of programs in that area to, to help us um, build, a, build a school that looks like the society it's impacting. And it'll make 
uh, make our solutions, uh, our education, our work much more relevant and impactful. There and we have made a pretty bold proposal to uh, increase the faculty size here uh, in Baskin Engineering, uh, but we've done it in a very strategic way in the sense that we we don't want to just hire bodies, but we want to think about how we can shape the work that we do, the education we provide in in building a larger faculty, and so. I just want to mention some areas that we're going to focus on, we're planning on focusing on. Agricultural technology, very relevant to where we are um, uh, in, near here, I mean in the South County. Uh, data science, synthetic biology, um, visual computing. Okay, see these are all areas that are, are very uh, important new areas and uh, important and relevant areas of where we, where we live and where we were. So let me celebrate a little bit some of our successes, our recent successes. Uh, we, um, we've been doing very well in getting grants. Grants, in a sense, are the, the engine of our research. Uh, and um, we've, just to list a few, we've gotten recently, this year, a $2.7 million grant from the NIH. $1.1 million grant from the NIH, a million dollar grant from DARPA, which is the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency. Um, three of our faculty have gotten NSF career grants. Career grants recognize junior faculty who have tremendous potential for uh, future achievement. And for us to get our, our new faculty to get three of them in, in, in one year is, is spectacular. Uh, we got a $10 million gift from the Sh Schmidt Futures Foundation. Uh, Eric Schmidt was the uh, chairman of the board of, of Google and then Alphabet. Uh, he's now uh, sort of an emeritus in that role. Um, and uh, he is, well, he formed a foundation recently that's been looking for, looking to fund work that no, no funding agency would ever touch because it was just too far out there. And um, we are very honored to have been selected with one of those projects. Um, that project is something that we refer to as the Brain Engineers Project. Brain Engineers, because what they're doing is they're developing technology for growing and studying in a three-dimensional form models of brain tissue physical models of brain tissue. These are actual living organoids that are growing and being stimulated and um, being studied in the laboratory. It's a spectacular project that is a collaboration between our Genomics Institute and our Electrical and Computer Engineering Department. Uh, we've got numerous patents. Um, we have one of our recent patent awardees sitting right here, David Burnick. Congratulations. Sorry? <laughs> Congratulations. Congratulations. Uh, numerous patents. Uh, you know, the patents really are a way for us to, to put a flag in the ground and say, you know, this work was done here. It's of importance and has value. And, um, uh, and then we disclose this to the world. And I, and I think that's, that's a wonderful sort of marker, indicator of what, what achievements we've had. Um, one of our CSE faculty, computer science and engineering faculty, uh, Professor Lisa Couture, she was, she gave the university-wide faculty research lecture this year. This is the highest honor that a faculty member is given on our campus for the research work that they do. Um, she gave that talk on basically ethical artificial intelligence. She uh, gave a short version of it this morning upstairs. Um, and she's also leading our uh, Data Science Institute, D3, Data, Data Discovery and Decisions Institute. Um, and one of the activities that they are engaged in is coming up. It's a Data Science Day, which will be on May 10th. And um, I encourage you to go visit our website and and see what fun things are going to be there in which we talk about not just the 
this, the, you know, the uses of data science, which I think are very important, but also the context for how those things get used. We've been given approval by the uh, university, by the big University of California, not just the campus, uh, to launch the nation's first program in serious games. Um, serious games are uh, games that are not, not intended to be for entertainment, but it's rather for, I'll call it serious purposes, um, um, whether that be in education or in training or in um, uh, healthcare, um, such as helping people who suffer from stroke to, and to motivate them to uh, motivate them to exercise. Right, that's one of the big problems in in healthcare where you need to actually do something in order to make yourself better, it's incredibly boring. And so if you can think about how to turn that into a game, you might actually, might actually motivate people to, to do the exercises that they need to do. Uh, we hosted the West Regional Meeting of the National Society of Black Engineers. Um, we started a new uh, speaker series. We're in the middle of it. It's uh, Diverse Voices, where we're bringing in uh, students and other other local people to talk about their experiences uh, as a under in a, as, as a member of an underrepresented community, um, their experiences in in engineering. Um, we will also be uh, having a panel in um, sponsored by Outen Engineering um, to talk specifically about issues of um, being a person who is uh, um, gay and has and, and faces a, a different set of challenges in uh, the engineering world. Um, and I'll just conclude with one other thing, which is uh, that I, I, not that I'm advertising this exactly, but I am going to uh, look for the premiere of a new series called Devs on um, FX TV. It's supposed to be I think this fall, and what you will notice is that the headquarters of a particular uh, high-tech AI company looks a remarkably like the E2 building. Uh, so uh, this, this site right here served for about a week as the um, headquarters of, of this AI company, and um, they transformed it in various ways, uh, but uh, this is a story of a computer engineer uh, who is investigating and becomes suspicious of her company that she works for having caused the disappearance of her boyfriend who also worked at the company. And it follows that, that mystery trail and looks actually looks into the issues of um, you know, artificial intelligence and what are we really doing with artificial intelligence and what are some of the dangers of artificial intelligence. In her case, she appears to have lost her boyfriend. Uh, that's a pretty serious, that's a pretty serious impact of AI that I just would not have thought of. <laughs>